are you still not playing Pioneer? Well, if Dredgeless Dredge didn't dredge up your interest, and Bogleless Bogles didn't cause you to slip into the format, then maybe this is the deck that's going to make a splash. Because it's Merfolkless Merfolk. And it's, uh, uh, wait a minute, one, three, two, four, seven, eight, nine, ten? I, there's actually Merfolk in this Merfolk deck! Then I guess this deck tech is actually Merfolk Full Merfolk. And best of all, unlike Pioneer decks like Inverter of Truth, which costs $450, Niv to Light, which costs $500, Let's be honest, the average cost for Pioneer is about 500 bucks, but even Mono Red in Pioneer is going to cost you over 150. Merfolk Full Merfolk is only about $50, and it's still a fun and competitive deck that can splash in for the win. So let's take a look. The deck uses Mono Blue Tempo to create a very curve-dependent deck that quickly balances escalating threats with temporary removal to force our opponent to constantly play catch-up. The components of the deck are threats, protection, and disruption, and our deck will quickly begin to sink the hopes of your opponents as you pull further and further ahead while they struggle to tread water. We start the hurt early with four copies of Cloudfin Raptor. This little flyer doesn't impress at face value, but as we play more creatures, it's easy to push them into two to three or even four power. And when the original cost is just one mana, we can't beat that value, and seldom can our opponents. Another one drop that simply cannot be ignored is Curious Obsession. This aura is overloaded in value, giving plus one plus one and the ability to draw a card every time we connect with our opponent. Now we're always gonna have to swing in to keep the obsession alive, but this is a deck where we want to be bashing. And worst case scenario, well, we don't have to swing with the obsessed creature. But either way, this enchantment makes anything in our deck public enemy number one to our opponent causing them damage and keeping us stocked up on cards. Tempest Jin is a big flying beat stick with at least three power and only more as the game goes on. Tough to push and not dying to lightning strike, only Glorybringer or Lyra will be able to best this beast in the air. Another great new threat from Theros Beyond Death, Calafi, beloved of the sea, is a new demigod with great all-around value. Calafi has power equal to our blue devotion, meaning the blue pips in the cost of our permanence. Most cards in our deck have two or even three blue pips to make sure our beloved is swinging strong. She also brings in a taxing effect, charging one extra mana per spell if our opponent wants to target our creatures or enchantments, which is sure to pester our opponent and spoil some plans and stop them from developing their board if they want a chance to interact with ours. Our last threat is sure to make waves. In fact, he'll master them. Master of Waves is our game ender. For four mana, we get a 2-1 with protection from red that makes a number of 1-0 elementals equal to our blue devotion. The Master of Waves is even a lord for elementals so that our waves can stick around. Depending on when he drops, this easily makes 4-7 2-1 tokens and gives our opponent a simple question. Kill me now or be overwhelmed by the waves very soon. If we curve one drop to four drop, we are looking to play 16 power of creatures on the board for four mana. What a steal. This is also the most expensive card we run at about $5 each, but well worth that price. But all of these threats are going to need protection, so let's see how we are going to save our creatures with the slew of nifty tricks. Siren's Storm Tamer is a one mana 1-1 one, one flyer that will sack for a blue to counter any spell targeting us or a creature we control. So this selfless pirate will get in early chip damage, then take a dive to save any of our bigger threats. Also from Ixalan comes two copies of Dive Down. This stellar instant gives plus zero plus three and hexproof to a target. This will keep safe any creature from spot removal and even save our biggest creature from a damage-based sweeper like Anger of the Gods or Sweltering Suns. This card is here to save anything that might be curiously obsessed to make sure we don't fall into the aura trap of the two for one. Two copies of Unsubstantiate might look like disruption over protection, but hear me out. The creature bounce is the lesser mode on this spell, as we are here to bounce spells, or a very specific spell. Our main aim is to bounce the uncounterable Supreme Verdict. 
Verdict is a wipeout for us, but if we can bounce it off the stack, then our opponents are down four mana, and we are very possibly in to swing for the win. And if it's not Supreme Verdict that we're bouncing, any three mana removal spell will also steal the turn right from under our opponent's feet. As long as whatever you bounce is more than two mana, we go up in tempo. Finally, we have Wizard's Retort. This simple counter spell will frequently just be, well, counter spell. And since the deck is running 14 wizards, more often than not, we'll be wielding the power of the original counter spell for just double blue. As always, assessing what to counter is vital, and if we have a Curious Obsession running, we need to save this to protect the Obsession unless we have another protection piece in hand. So don't be afraid to use the counter spell as disruption if you have a Dive Down or a Storm Tamer in play. Speaking of disruption, let's make sure our opponent's behemoths don't run us over before we can do the same. Merfolk Trickster is double blue for a 2-2 with flash, and when it enters the battlefield, we tap down any creature our opponent controls and take away all its abilities for the turn. We use this to make sure we are winning any race, as well as stopping any would-be blockers at the end of our opponent's turn, breaking any plans or hopes for stabilizing with a big glory bringer or giving control players a taste of their own medicine with a tapped Lyra. Due to no real evasion, Trickster might not be the best obsession target, but if we don't have any other targets, well, a 3-3 is still gonna apply some form of pressure. We also run three copies of another merfolk, Harbinger of the Tides. Another two drop, but one that can be cast with flash for double blue and two. When Harbinger enters the battlefield, it bounces a creature that is tapped. So as a two drop, it's a very simple tempo play, bouncing whatever just swung at us or what we tapped down with Trickster. But for four mana, he's a devious trick bouncing mid combat. Both these two drops build our devotion by two, but now for a creature to build it by three, Gadwick the Wizened. He might have an X in his casting cost, but even if you curve into him at three, he will be a great value. He can refill your hand if you have extra lands in play, but beyond that, and of course his three blue pips for devotion, what we really want is his amazing ability. Whenever we cast a blue spell, we can tap a creature an opponent controls. Let's take a look. Yeah, I think we have a few blue spells laying around. With this in play, our opponent isn't just worried about racing, they're hoping they can even block, and spoilers, they won't get to. Now we're gonna need to cast these spells, so let's take a look at our mana base. Oh, mana bases are always so complex and expensive. No wait, we're just running 22 islands. Hey, you asked for a budget deck, I gave you a budget deck. 22 islands, if you've got some extra cash lying around, then you can upgrade with four Muta Vaults, but 22 islands is just fine. Let's talk about the sideboard. Big Red and Mono Green are two big decks in the format, as well as Gruel Aggro, so we're gonna start with four copies of Tidebinder Mage to hold down any green or red creature. Damping Sphere is expensive at $2, but Mono Green Ramp has lots of lands that make more than one mana, and Lotus Field is the new deck that needs to get shut off, so yeah, we're running Damping Sphere. The second clause about casting multiple spells per turn also shuts down a lot of the plans of Phoenix players. This much versatility means we can't ignore the utility of this two mana artifact, so we run a pair. A playset of negate keep us countering against control decks and making sure Narset and Teferi stay off the board. A pair of Aetherize might seem a bit slow at four mana, but any deck wanting to go wide or decks with a lot of untargetable threats will allow this almost settle to send a lot of cards packing back to our opponent's hand, and in the case of Bogles, all those auras to the yard. Finally, we want to run Disdainful Stroke to show disdain for anybody trying to cast spells with converted mana cost four or greater. This is really good protection against some of the big bads that are going to try and hit the board opposite us. Like I said, if you want upgrades, the first big pickup item would be a playset of Muta Vaults, but I'd also look towards adding maybe two to three copies of Thassa, God of the Sea. Obviously, a three mana indestructible 5-5 five five that scries one a turn and makes anything unblockable is a real house of a card. And it's who we might consider trading out some copies of Calafi or even Tempest Gin 4. Beyond that, there's not much more needing upgrading. I'd love to add a pair of Rapid Hybridization into the sideboard, as it's a great answer to Walking Ballistas or other combo pieces. 
I mean, come on, a 3-3 frog lizard is way less scary than a Heliod Ballista. And we might splurge on a pair of Ashiok Dream renders in the sideboard for some good graveyard removal and possibly just milling important pieces of our opponent's plans while shutting off their ability to Fabled Passage. It also adds to Blue Devotion, which is really nice. But beyond that, this deck is already decked out with what it needs to be a real powerful presence in this modern Pioneer meta. If you haven't played Pioneer yet, then why not sleeve up some mono blue merfolk full merfolk and give the format a try? Special thanks as always to Jonathan Choi, our editor, as well as Ricky Lin of Crew 3 Pioneer Podcast, who served as a professional consultant. If you love Pioneer, be sure to check out the links to the Crew 3 Pioneer Podcast in this video's description. And may all your streams be merfolk full. mists and shadows on your side, your opponents will be swinging at nothing but air, trying to pin down the number one Demir Assassin. So step forward and place Atrada in the command zone, ensuring your opponents are nothing but a liability as she works her way through her list. The Silencer is a 3-5 unblockable vampire assassin for two, a blue and a black, and whenever she deals combat damage to a player, we can exile a creature that player controls with a hit counter on it. If that player ever controls three cards in exile with hit counters, they lose the game. Itrata is very powerful, but she does have a downside. She also must shuffle back into the deck after she hits, and while we can always return her to the command zone, that'll increase her commander tax. We'll need to use blink and bounce effects to keep her out of the command zone and in the fight.